Hey everyone, it's Chris Newman from the spreadsheetguru.com. Today we're going to be looking at the tick mark add in and covering the first three buttons in the investigate group. These buttons are very handy to check for potential issues with data you're maybe putting on a slide or quickly understanding data that comes to you from someone else. So let's dive into it. First, we're going to cover a button called the plug finder. And what it does is looks for cells either in a selected range or throughout the whole sheet. And it's going to analyze formulas that have addition or subtracted numbers at the end of it. So what you can do is either highlight your data set you want to look at, or if you just have one cell selected, it's going to search the whole sheet and you can click the plug finder button. And it's going to give you a few settings that you can tweak to tailor how you search for the plug. So a few exclusion options can be if you want to exclude minus or plus ones in the formulas, or if you want to exclude a certain percentage of the total value. So that could be used if, if you're not worried about plugs for very minimal amounts compared to the cell value as a whole. And you can finally exclude cells without cell references. So this would be more of a formula like equals one plus one instead of equals a one plus one. Also, you have a few marker options for what you want to use to flag cells that are found with plugs in them. You've got red dot, red box, or red circle as your options there. For this demo, I'm going to leave everything untouched from the default settings. And I'm going to go ahead and click the find plugs button. And I get a message that says there were two instances found and it asks if I want to launch the plug tracker. So I will click yes to launch the plug tracker. You don't have to launch this if you only have a few. But what the plug tracker allows you to do is it lists out all the plugged cells that it found and you can double click to navigate to that cell that it found. So if you have a list of 10 or more, this might be handy to launch while you're looking at each of your plugged cells that have found. The idea here is you would navigate through the list and look at each cell and see if uh, the formula needs to be adjusted or not based on your data set. So you can go through and either get rid of these if they were used last month and you don't need them anymore. And in this case, this was a, a big plug here that really messed up the data set. So if we would have sent this where it had plus 4 million added to the total, we probably would have gotten in trouble displaying that. So once you're done, you can uh, click the remove markers button here. There's also, if you don't launch the plug tracker, you do have some options here below the button to hide or, or remove those markers you can click anything you want to remove those markers and you should be all set with your plugs here. The next items we'll look for are what we call ghost cells. And these are cells where people put values in the cells, but for whatever reason, they hide them visually. So they, they hide them with white font. We will go ahead and click this ghost finder. And similar to the plug finder, we have some criteria and also some marker options that we can pick from. For the criteria, we can find cells with white font and white fill. We can find cells with white font and no fill. And we also have the option to change the font to black if it finds those ghost cells. For this demo, I am just going to leave the defaults as they are and hit the find ghost button. So I get a message that says there were three ghost cells found. Would I like to launch the ghost tracker, which is the same idea as the plug tracker. I'll click yes to show you what that looks like. And then I can double click a cell reference to navigate down to the cells that it found. Now I can see here that I've got some values here, but you wouldn't know it based on their visual appearance. And if I wanted to just see what those cells are actually driving, I can go to the formula auditing button set here and trace the dependent for that. And I can see this row right here appears to be pointing down to this row down here. I'm going to remove the markers and click that ghost finder button again. 
This time I'm going to check the box that says change font to black and find ghosts. I'm not going to launch the ghost tracker this time. And I'll see that those three cells that got called out as ghost cells are now in black font. So I know what values are down there. To remove those markers, I can click the remove markers button and I am good to go on that front. The last button we're gonna cover in this video is called the data organizer. And this is a great way to quickly understand how the data that comes to you is formatted, where it's coming from in the spreadsheet, and just give you an overall basic understanding of what you're looking at. For this example, I have a small data set here that just looks pretty typical. We've got some months going across. We've got some fields that describe what the data is row by row going down. And let's just run the, the data organizer and see what it finds. So I'm gonna click the data organizer button and I get this message box here that asks me if I want to format this sheet or format a copy of this sheet. One important thing to keep in mind when you run this is once it formats the sheet, it cannot be undone by the undo button. So if you are worried about the formatting messing up your spreadsheet and you having to redo it, uh, you might wanna click that copy sheet button. If you're looking at raw data like this where there isn't much formatting going on, you might be safe to just format this sheet. For this demo, I'm gonna use the copy sheet button to show you what that looks like. And I also get a message that said it found one instance of a plug. So we'll, we'll see what it finds there as well. So you can see down here, my raw data tab got copied and you can see there's a whole bunch of formats that have been added to this data set. Now, what do these formats mean? There is a couple options down here to insert a legend that describes what the formats represent. So you can do vertical, which looks like this, or you can do a horizontal, which looks like this. And you can see as we go down the black font or hard-coded input numbers, the blue font represents cells with formulas in them. The yellow font represents cells with off-sheet references. So you can see in this formula, it's referencing another tab in the workbook. And the red with white font represents plugs. So let's go look at this one. And you can see there's a plus five added to this formula right here. Another great thing is you can find outliers in your data. So you can see right here, it highlighted this cell and you might ask the question, why is there a formula? Why is there 50 being added to this number? So it's stuff you might not see, especially if you're looking at thousands and thousands of data points that the data organizer can quickly show you visually. Now, if you don't wanna use these specific colors for your formatting, you can adjust these in the settings. So if you hit the corner button in the investigate section right here, there's a whole section in the settings dedicated to the data organizer where you have the ability to update the cell font color used and the cell fill color if you enter in the RGB color code. There's also criteria for the plug finder where you can narrow down how the plug finder actually functions when you click the button. And there you have it. We've now covered the first three buttons in the tick mark add-in. Very powerful buttons in understanding and looking for potential error causing items in your spreadsheet and also just understanding data that you're looking at.